It's also called a catch light. Catch light, eye light, wh whatever term you want to use, go for it. The obsessive pay pay. What's up guys, welcome back to the Obsessive DP. Today we're gonna go over something very interesting, something very ocular, something very reflective, something that you probably don't think about, but you do feel it. This is one of the biggest cinematography aspects that denotes feeling into the audience like that, like very clearly. For instance, I'll show you two frames on screen right now, one without any eye light and one with a giant eye light. Just look at how different the feeling of the image gives off. How do you feel about each character? You feel about them completely differently. One is a creepy, scary movie, uh, thriller type frame. The other is a little puppy dog. The face of the other you just want to hug. You want to give a giant hug and love and connect with and understand. One you want to rent, you want to run, <sighs> can't talk. Oh my, run. One you want to run away from, the other one you want to embrace. That is all about the eye light. Look about the different emotion that it gives off. As far as how you actually set up an eye light, we did this production recently where we set up a key light and an eye light. They were both in, shooting into the same scrim, but one was a lot stronger where it reflected into the eye and the other just for the general key light actually really didn't play in the eye at all. There's two aspects of the eye light that you need to dance around with on set as you are lighting your scene. One way to light your scene with an eye light is just to use the key. If you're just using the key, then you do have very specific points where the key will actually not be reflected as you're moving your key from, from the middle of the frame to the side, there's a certain point where the reflection will no longer show up in your character's eye. So if you're using just your key as your eye light, you're going to be limited in the scope and in the direction that you can place your light in relative to your subject. It all depends on where your subject is pointing. For instance, over here, I'm not gonna have as much of an eye light as if I'm right here. You can even see it in the glasses. The reflections in the glasses show up as well as the reflections in the eyes, depending on where my face is pointing. So there's kind of two ways to do it. If you're doing like a big overall key and, and it's a wide shot, you may not have a good eye light because your light is so far away from your subject. You might actually need to get a harder powered source into a spot just out of frame that it's gonna reflect in your character's eyes. I loved how we did this on the most recent shoot where we had a white psych stage and we used a book light with an M18, my favorite light, I have uh, shown this off in other videos, and we used a Hudson spider light right next to the book light shooting into the same scrim. So one was bounced, one was shooting through non-bounced, but they still had the same direction because they're shooting through the same scrim. Something that can happen if you're not using the same source as your eye light and your key light is that you can have two different shadows on the face. You may have a shadow from the eye light, a little more straight on and you may have a shadow from your key light just off i hate that i hate having separate shadows on the face the face is such a delicate thing you want to light you want to be very specific about any face that's in your frame because it's a face a face is a very delicate thing to light depending on what kind of emotion you want to give off to your audience you have to be very specific about it so what i loved about the setup right here is that we were able to use the same scrim, the same soft source for our harder eye light that's more, that's more straight onto the face and the softer key light that's more sidey to the face. Even though it was a big source, it was the same source. It was the same eight by eight light grid. You can really see how bright the eye light is in all of these shots, the final frames of the commercials compared to other shoots we've done on a psych stage. Other shoots we've done, we haven't used that second Hudson Spider that's more directly shooting through. Last time we used just two HMIs bouncing off of an ultra bounce and then coming back through. So they weren't as sharp, they weren't as bright on the face. And I do like a softer source on the face. I think it looks nice to have, especially for commercial work, having a really nice, soft, creamy source. Once you start getting into hard sources, you start getting crazy shadows. You get shadows on the side of the face. You get crazy nose shadows, shadows in the eyes from the eyebrows. That's why I loved soft sources. But I loved how this turned out. It was 
kind of a mistake to be honest. It wasn't actually intentional in this case and that's the beauty of being a cinematographer is sometimes you just have an idea and you try it on set and it looks way better than you thought it would, way better than your planned setup, your planned overhead diagram and then you get onto set and you're like, hey, I'm gonna try this out and you do it and you're like, wow. Now the final product is way better than you even imagined it could be because you're just improvising on set. That's the beauty of being a director of photography, trying different things to make the end product look and feel better. There's all different kinds of eye lights as well. It, let's say you're at a mirror in your bathroom and you have those lights all around the outside of the mirror. If you actually use those in the shot, which a lot of people don't because it's gonna, it's gonna give off a very specific vibe. But if you do use those, it's gonna look crazy. Some people will use ring lights. Ring lights give off a very fashion, interesting flair. I don't really like to use them for cinematography. I think they look very strange. They were a fad back in the early thousands in music videos and they, they were cool, they looked cool because it's just a very specific odd vibe that they're gonna give off. Usually you use a circle or a square. Squares are very common in real world. Let's say there's a window. For instance, on Knives Out, they went crazy and actually built a huge window frame that had a light, soft source shooting through it to make the eye light in the glasses of the interrogation scenes look natural, but it was completely fake. They had to build windows, they had to shoot lights through it. It wasn't to key the scene, it was just for the reflections off the glasses to make them look natural instead of having a random circle reflecting off the glasses or a random square like a softbox. They actually went the extra mile, which I appreciate. I appreciate going the obsessive route to make the final visual look absolutely out of this world amazing. Getting caught up in that little minutia makes you a better filmmaker, hands down. Go try this out, guys. Comment down below the final products that you've used an eye light on. I would love to see them. I would love to hear feedback on what you guys are thinking, what you guys are learning through this, and what else you would like us to cover. We love to do that. Please subscribe. Please stay invested in this community because it's only going to grow if you guys are a part of it. Stay obsessed.